<laughs> right, compared to 50 years ago, right? Exactly. Right, Sal? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to take the marina. Dan's going to take the marina, right? Yes. <laughs> Make sure you take it all the way far away. Right? Okay, good evening, everyone. We are going to start the regular meeting for July 16th. At this time, the public's lines will be muted until public portions are open. All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. All participants are muted. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Elmwood Park Mayor and Council for July 16, 2020 to order at 7 p.m. On roll call, Council Members Fasolo. Here. Golabek. Here. Ingui. Here. Pellegrin. Here. Wechler. Here. Council President Balistrieri. Here. Mayor Coletti. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Erin. I'd like to welcome everyone here to our public meeting and welcome the uh, council. We have a full physical council here today, first time in a long time. Although we've had predominantly all those council meetings were filled, but via phone call conversations and uh, presently uh, up here on the dais. Uh, with that said, uh, let's get started. Uh, everybody, please rise for a prayer and flag salute. O oh God, our Father, we ask you bless our meetings, which we entrust to your fatherly care. Please remove all selfishness and prejudice from our hearts and implant therein a keen sense of justice and greater love for you and our neighbors. Guide us in our deliberation so that our decisions will always please you and bring your peace and happiness to our community. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Whereas chapter 231 of the public laws of the state of New Jersey require at the commencement of every meeting a statement of compliance be read by the presiding officer. Now, therefore, be advised that that meeting requirements for this meeting have been met by publishing a special notice in the record in Herald News and by posting such notice in the office of the borough clerk, as well as in a public place within the municipal building and by notifying interested citizens. Said notice was posted on January 8th, 2020. An additional notice reflecting the time change was published on April 21st, 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is being videotaped. How do we all look? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we'll be uh, televised on Cablevision, channel 77, on Monday at 3 p.m. and Thursday at 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m., excuse me. The video will also be available on the borough's website at www.elmwoodparknj.us. Ms. Delaney? Please note that due to precautionary measures to help prevent the spread of COVID-19, we have a conference call set up for the public to call as a means of participating in tonight's meeting. For the public's information and record, the public's lines will be muted, except for when we open up the meeting for public hearings. We thank you in advance for your patience during the operation of tonight's meeting. May I continue, Mayor? I'm sorry? May I continue? Yes, please. Under the approval of minutes this evening, we have the June 18th, 2020 regular meeting, June 22nd, 2020 special meeting, and July 9th, 2020 work session and executive session meetings. May I have a motion on the minutes? Second. second. All, call the roll, please. First by Wechler, second by Pellegrin on roll call. Council members Fasolo? Yes. Golabek? Yes. Ingui? on June 18th and June 22nd. Pellegrin? Yes. Wechler? Yes. Council President Balistrieri? Uh, I abstain on June 22nd special meeting, but yes on the rest. Okay, motion carries. Moving on to ordinances being introduced on first reading. 
R-275-20, introduce ordinance number 20-21 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend chapter two of the code of the borough of Elmwood Park titled administration, more specifically article two offices created section 2-7.3 titled municipal clerk compensation additional. Be passed and adopted on first reading and be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in the municipal building on Thursday, August 13, 2020 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as the same can be heard, at which time any persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be and she is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper a notice of introduction and final hearing as required by law. Michael, would you care to comment on that? Yes, Mayor. So, Mayor and Council, the uh, clerk and I had a conversation regarding uh, several days a year that she is required to put in additional hours for elections which she is charged with that responsibility the former clerk had an agreement in place actually it was an ordinance um, which permitted him to receive compensation for those days this is uh, pretty similar to that it's just that we asked our attorney to clean up the language so it's more straightforward so everyone can understand it so uh, I completely agree with this and and I, I believe it's the right right thing to do thank you for that uh comment may i have a motion so moved. any discussion call the roll please first by wetchler second by ingui on roll call council members for solo recuse golabek ingui yeah. pellegrin yes. wetchler yes. council president balistrari yes motion carries Resolution R-276-20, introduce ordinance number 20-22 on first reading. Be it resolved that an ordinance entitled Bond Ordinance to authorize the undertaking of the Elmwood Park Marina Improvement Project in by and for the borough of Elmwood Park, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $1,400,000 to pay the cost thereof to authorize the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. Be passed and adopted on first reading and be it resolved that a final hearing on said ordinance will be heard in a municipal building on Thursday, August 13, 2020 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter the same can be heard, at which time any persons interested in said ordinance can be heard. Be it further resolved that the borough clerk be and she is hereby authorized to advertise in a legal newspaper a notice of introduction and final hearing as required by law. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Golenbeck to speak on this, being that uh, he's been spearheading the charge. Mr. Golenbeck? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is a bond, uh, for a potential bond for $1.4 million, and that encompasses if we decided to move ahead with the Marina Project. Because we are seeking state money and county money, we need to show to them a willingness that we are able to spend um, this type of money, which we would typically do through bonding, if we went ahead with the project. Once we get an answer from open space as to how much grant money we're getting, the council will then be able to make a decision whether we're moving ahead or whether we're scrapping this, uh, this bond ordinance. So this does not tie us into anything. It does not require us to do anything. It just demonstrates to these agencies that we do have means of funding something if we go through with it. Mr. Golovic, I, I believe our goal would be to acquire two-thirds of the monies needed. Uh, then we'd be foolish at, at that point not to do this because two-thirds of it is being paid from a grant outside money. I'm happy to, I'm happy to hear that, Mayor. Well, Hopefully uh, we get that. Yeah. It's not in our hands, but if we did do that, that would be a very good day. Well, let's make it our, our, a goal to get there. So uh, thank you for the explanation. Sure. Mr. Laney. May I have a motion on the ordinance? Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, first by Wetchler, second by Fasolo on roll call council members. Fasolo? Yes. Golabek? Yes. Ingui? Yes. Pellegrin? Yes. Wetchler? Yes. Council President Balistrieri? Yes. Motion carries. Now for ordinances being introduced on second and final reading. Resolution R-277-20, introduced ordinance number 20-18 on second reading, whereas a public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled, an ordinance to amend chapter two administration, more specifically article three of the code of the borough of Elm Park titled, Department of Local Government, more specifically section 2-27 entitled, Police Department, more specifically section 2-27.1 entitled creation of the department members where said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, June 18, 2020 and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting and whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given an opportunity to be heard concerning the same. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Owen Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to amend Chapter 2 administration, more specifically Article 3 of the Code of the Borough of Owen Park, titled Department of the Local Government, more specifically Section 2-27, entitled Police Department, more specifically Section 2-27.1, entitled Creation of the Department Members, pass on final reading. We have a motion to open to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Mr. Laney, would you be so kind? Absolutely. At this time, I'm going to open the lines up for the public hearing. For anyone wishing to speak, please state your name and address for the public's record. All participants are unmuted. Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only? Is there anyone that cares to speak on this ordinance? If not, all participants are muted. And the all participants are muted. <laughs> if not, I'll close the public portion. May I have a, a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. First by Wetchler, second by Pellegrin. On roll call, council members Fasolo? Yes. Golabek? Yes. Ingui? I have to recuse myself. Pellegrin? Yes. Wetchler? Yes. Council President Balistrieri? Abstain. Motion carries. Resolution R-278-20, introduce ordinance number 20-19 on second reading. Whereas the public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the borough of Owen Park in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, amending chapter 14 entitled fire prevention, more specifically section 14-1.8 entitled non-life hazard uses by amending and adding certain language contains in a new use to that section with the proposed language and use as follows. Whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, June 18, 2020, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting, whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given an opportunity to be heard concerning the same. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Elma Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Borough of Elma Park in the County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 14, entitled Fire Prevention, more specifically Section 14-1.8, entitled non-life hazard uses by amending and adding certain language contained in a new use to that section with the proposed language and use as follows. Pass on final reading. May I have a motion to open for a public hearing? So Second. All in favor? Aye. Ms. Delaney, would you be so kind once again? At this time, I'm going to unmute the public's lines for anyone wishing to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only. All participants are unmuted. Would anyone like to speak at this time? Going once, going twice. If no one else cares to speak on this ordinance, I move to adopt the ordinance. All participants are muted. Motion, please. Second. All in favor? Call the roll, please. First by Wetchler, second by Pellegrin on roll call, council members Fasolo? Yes. Golabek? Yes. Ingui? Yes. Pellegrin? Yes. Wetchler? Yes. Council President Balistrieri? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution R-279-20, introduced ordinance number 20-20 on second reading, whereas a public notice has been given by the borough clerk that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to fix the salary, wage, and compensation of the officers, employees, and servants of the borough of Elmwood Park, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, for the year 2020, whereas said ordinance was introduced and passed at a meeting held on Thursday, June 18th, 2020, and that further consideration of this ordinance would be taken up at this meeting, and whereas all persons interested in said ordinance were given an opportunity to be heard concerning the same. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Elwood Park that an ordinance entitled an ordinance to fix the salary, wage, and compensation of the officers, employees, and servants of the borough of Elmwood Park, County Bergen, State of New Jersey, for the year 2020, pass on final reading. May I have a motion to open for the public? Second. Ms. Delaney? At this time, I'm going to unmute the public's lines for anyone wishing to speak on this ordinance and this ordinance only. All participants are unmuted. Would anyone like to speak on this ordinance? Good evening. Uh, Jeffrey Freitag, 35, Inland Drive, Inland. Uh, my question uh, regarding 279-20, uh, that's the resolution number, Ordinance 2020. Why um, are not all 
uh, either part-time or stipended positions or uh, little amounts of money given to people in that particular uh, chart there. Okay. Why are they not all in there? Some are I, ongoing, I guess, as the year goes by or changed. There are even some this evening that are being put on there. But they'll never appear in this, this format. And I'm talking in particular Section 3, part-time employees, and even the other one above it. Also. That's page 16, it would be, I guess. Or, or rather, 17. Mr. Feligno, why they're not all on? Yeah, we're going to have uh, J Jeff. Uh, welcome. We're going to have Mr. Feligno uh, com comment on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Freitag, some of those positions are covered under uh, contracts, white collar, DPW, or police. Um, so that could uh, be some of the ones you're. Do you have anything specific? Or did you have one in mind specifically? Like, for instance, just, I'll, I'll take for something I'm involved in, the planning board secretary. That's, that's a named amount of money, such as the board adjustment. There are many things that I help department. I think the health department's the one that's not on there. So some of the ones that aren't on there? All on there. Some of them that aren't on there uh, or can be done by resolution or ordinance. So, Mr. Mr. Freitag, um, the planning board secretary and zoning board secretaries are on there. The reason why the board of health secretary is not on there is because the board of health is its own entity. So they have their own salary ordinance that um, adopts the salary for both the secretary and the registrar. Okay. So what, what I'm saying is, though, um, regardless, that comes out of uh, tax dollars, correct? Comes out of what, Jeff? Could you repeat that, please? Tax dollars. Tax dollars. He's saying it comes out of tax dollars. Of course, it all comes from tax what dollars. What I'm saying is, why are they not on there? If John Q. Citizen looked at this. We, I think we just explained that to you, Mr. Freitag. What's that? So specifically for the health health board, they're they're autonomous. We don't have jurisdiction over them. No, that's not the case. It's just Obviously, that's not the case. Yes. There's, there's a restriction. Right. It's just that this document is not uh, holding that that uh, information. Yes. So our CFO our CFO prepares this document. We can uh, circle back with him and and get a little clearer answer for you, Mr. Freitag, if that would help. Thing that, and not I'm not pointing out anything particular, but there's oftentimes there are different amounts of money given to people. It should appear not I know they're approved, but you're telling me like the um, uh, rent leveling or, or whatever uh, the uh, one that goes to the uh, health department. They're approved, but they don't appear on here. Okay, uh, uh, Ms. Delaney would like to speak a little further on the matter. Uh, Mr. Freitag, all, basically all of the secretaries, planning, zoning, rent leveling are on here. And as I explained, the Board of Health, um, they're their own um, board, so they're separate. However, what the council does control is the budget that the Board of Health gets. So, you know, they work with the CFO for their budget for the year, and then once they're approved that budget, they have the sole decision on how much they want to pay their secretary and the registrar. The council does not have authority over that. That's specifically the Board of Health and any other stipend positions that are under the white collar contract, as Mr. Feligno mentioned, would not be on this ordinance. It's only for those not covered by a contract. Okay. I, I, it's, it's not a, getting back to the health department, and not, not to point out that specifically, but is that by statute, or is that just the way things operate? Mr. Feligno. So, Mr. Freitag, as I indicated before, I'd like to get that answer from our CFO. That's his expertise, and uh, we can report back to you as soon as we get that information. Okay. So, okay, so 
Did anyone else care to speak on this ordinance? If not, I will close the public portion. May I have a motion to adopt? All participants are muted. Second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. First by Wetchler, second by Pellegrino on roll call. Council members Vasolo? Yes. Golabek? Yes. Ingui? Yes. Pellegrine? Yes. Wetchler? Yes. Council President Balistrieri? <clears throat> yes. Motion carries. For tonight's consent agenda, we have the following resolutions. R-280-20 approval of payroll. R-281-20 approval of bills list. R-282-20 authorize additional funding, special legal counsel, personnel matters. R-283-20 authorize execution of contract, fair housing issues. R-284-20 authorize current estimate number two and change order number one. 2018 CDBG improvements to various streets for cleanup inc. R-285-20, authorized current estimate number two and change order number one. 2019 Road Program DNL Paving Contractors, Inc. R-286-20, authorized vacation buybacks. R-287-20, authorized vacation buyback. Police Department, Michael Fuligno. R-288-20, approved retirement compensation. Police Department, John Harris. R-289-20, award bid for curbside recycling. R-290-20, authorized increase in hourly wage. Building Department, R-291-20, authorized increase in hourly wage. Clerk's Office, R-292-20, redeemed third-party tax lien. R-293-20, approved Elmwood Park Fire Department. Stipend Program Second Quarter Compensation, R-294-20 Resolution to Refund Stop Payment Fee, R-295-20 Resolution to Refund Stop Payment Fee, R-296-20 Authorize Emergency Repair Services, Colinelli Brothers, Inc., R-297-20 Appoint Mayor Secretaries, R-298-20 Appoint Part-Time Dispatcher, Jimmy Rivera, Police Department, R-299-20 Enabling Resolution for Green Acres Grant, Elmwood Park Marina. R-300-20 Authorized Mayor's Approval Signature, New Jersey Turnpike Authority, R-301-20 Approval to Submit a Grant Application and Execute a Grant Contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for Funding from the Fiscal Year 2021 Municipal Aid Program for the Various Street Improvements Project. R-302-20 Approved Block Party Request. R-303-20 Approved Handicap Parking Space, Cadmus Avenue. R-304-20 Approved Handicap Parking Space, Elmwood Terrace. R-305-20 Established Bid Threshold Amount. R-306-20 Capital Budget Amendment. And R-307-20 Resolution to Approve the Consent Agenda. May I have a motion on the Consent Agenda? Second. Any discussion? Nobody's recusing themselves? Good. <laughs> I'm sorry? Once we do the roll call. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'll come afterwards. Call the roll, please. On roll call, Council Member, uh, first by Ingui, second by Wetchler. On roll call, Council Members Fasolo. I recuse on 293-20 and 297-20. Yes to the rest. 293 and 297? Yes. Okay. Golabek? I recuse on 297. Yes to the rest. Ingui? I will recuse on 280-20, only Aviana Ingui, and then 287-20, 288-20, and 298-20. And yes for the rest. Pellegrin? Yes. Wetchler? Yes. Council President Balistrieri? I recuse on R287-20, 288-20, 298-20, and yes on the rest. Motion carries. Mayor, this concludes my portion of the meeting this evening. Thank you. Council reports. Mr. Fasolo. Progress, Mayor. Mrs. Wetchler? Yes, I'd like you to give a report about the library. How are they doing? Since I haven't been there, and I, don't, I know a lot of things I'm going to ask you about. Okay. Um, I could say this, that um, our administrator and I were there approximately two weeks ago. Less. Less. A week, week and a half ago. And we had a time just as all melts know, together. Yeah. <laughs> when you get old. Yeah, for sure, for sure. We got any apples we want to throw at her or rotten tomatoes? In any case, before you rudely interrupted me, 
Uh, and I said that real nicely too, right? Yes, you did. Okay. The uh, consensus there was the project was moving along very slowly. Uh, Michael and I uh, questioned the builder who was very amiable to us and said that uh, some delays caused by the, the virus, uh, as far as product goes, uh, were delaying the project. So I asked him to let's cut to the chase. When's the opening day? And he, he said, uh, we can look at the second week of September. Opening date, you're talking about the, the library being open or the gentleman being out of the building? F his finish date, his completion okay. date. Okay. Yeah. Mike, you want to add to that? No, that's it. Okay. Okay. What happened to the, the water service? The waiting on. Problem with it? No, but there's paperwork that they were waiting on. I was under the impression that the, the, our code department is looking for a design, requesting a design from the engineer. Sure, sure, they, that, that would before be. Before they can do any more, if they can't do anything without the submission. Oh, okay, well, basically, basically that that's your first first step. Obviously, maybe they they missed the procedural part of that, but the uh, building department is not going to okay something that there's there's not an engineer that signed off on and agreed to. That this is uh, this is what should be done. So that was the paperwork he said he was submitting, and that was the delay, and that's why that trench is open right now. Okay. Um, another question. We're hoping. I know you are till for October. To be honest with you, because they're still waiting for a lot of furniture to come in, and they're waiting for that building to be empty. Mm. So really, I think October first would be the best time. If we can get everything in there. That'd be nice. Stuff in there already, but not a lot of it. And we're holding up. So as long as this takes, it's going to be longer and longer for us okay. to open it. So to be able to walk into that door. Yeah. Doris, we'll, if you agree, Mike, we'll take another trip then beginning of next week yeah. just to keep the fire, the fire going. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The only months. thing is if you just go on like on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, Friday, could you call me and I'll try to meet you over there? Yeah. I can walk. I don't mind walking. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy? Um, I don't really have anything other than that um, with the recreation. The camp did open last Monday and, and limited. And there might even be a couple of spaces open for additional if, uh, if any parent is looking to send them to camp. And they're still waiting on to find out what the regulations will be for fall aftercare. And that's all I have, Mayor. Okay, thank you. How's Donna making out? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I, I know she had an operation. Yes, yeah, she's out right now. I think did for the rest of the week. Yeah. Did anyone hear about on her? No. no? Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Golubek. Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Golubek. Yes, Mayor. <laughs> um, I just want to make a brief comment on uh, R301-20. It's our 2021 um, state DOT grant. Um, <clears throat> Two years ago, um, we got a grant to pave the boulevard from Market all the way to about the firehouse. And then that was paved through the intersection project. So, um, and as I've asked Alimo Engineering through the council to rescope that grant to do a lighting type, decorative lighting type project like we have on Market Street, like we have on Ackerman, Elma Drive, Garden, in that stretch to get that 190 grand to cover as much as we can from Market up to the firehouse and maybe Linden. <clears throat> so that's old money. We just sent an application to the state for our 2021 um, uh, application for a request of 450 grand to do between Linden Avenue and all the way up to Phillip Avenue. Those are the you know the the, the, the limits that for that kind of money. Um, similar type project running con conduit on um, under the. Um, the grass between the curb and the sidewalk um, to minimize cost and not do it you know on sidewalks or, or in the street um, and then you know put the put these decorative lights like you see on Elmwood Ackerman on Marcus Street and everything between those two spans um, because of the electricity underground because of the cost of lights this is why the number is big um, but you know we're moving towards hopefully one day getting that type of lighting project on our main road the boulevard our nicest road um, trying to get it more um, 
lighted better at night, um, look nicer while keeping as much of the green effect as possible. Um, so, you know, we won't hear for that for about another half year, but that's what we asked for, 450. Will we get all of it? Probably not, but we'll certainly get a nice chunk and be able to um, move towards that project. And, you know, maybe in five or six years, we'll have an entire boulevard illuminated by decorative lights. So, very exciting stuff, and I'm proud to report that. Thank you, Daniel. Also, uh, I saw your email on the uh, PSNG road repavement, and uh, you're doing a, st a stellar job with that. Uh, seems like uh, you took the bull by the horns and you're running with it, and that's most important. Yeah, and then the reason for that, Mayor, is when I was mayor last year, I was intimately involved in the, in the project. So they did a lot of um, gas work this year, but there were a few roads where they pretty much finished last year that they didn't get, a, get to paving. So um, the chief and I rode um, a few of those streets a few days ago, and essentially, um, you know, the recommendation was that we pave all of Martha curb to curb, um, a majority of Kip, and there's a section of Kip where the gas uh, line that they interrupted is literally right next to the sidewalk. So essentially, it, the the part of the road they screwed up doesn't even affect driving conditions. It's under where people park. Um, so that um, part of Kip is curb to curb, Craig Court gateway curb to curb and then the little streets that go between martha and kipped are the ones we said just leave those alone we'll get to those in a future road paving program right so no half roads it'll it's either curb to curb or we'll get to it in the future excellent and uh, uh that is uh, our method uh, going forward uh, it does make sense you look down a road and see half of it paved and the other half the people say are our leaders in this town crazy? They only paved half a road. Well, that's only because public services has to pave uh, half of the road. So what we've done instead is we're going to pave the whole road, but half the distance, and then the town will eventually pick up the, the difference of the road that wasn't paved. Much smarter. The worst part of any uh, uh, asphalt uh, paving is as open seam, and we're avoiding open seams. Thank you. Denise. Progress. Lorraine. The Board of Health is meeting Monday, July 20th at 7 p.m. right here. The Junior Police Academy, the applications must be in by tomorrow, July 17th. You can download an application online, www.elmwoodparkpd.com, or you can contact Detective Randy Gorillo at 201-796-0700, extension 118, to arrange pickup at headquarters. Also, I'd like to thank Strangers Helping Strangers for distributing food on our community on July 10th, last Friday. The weather was really bad last Friday night, but it still was on and we went and to the residents that came, they got hot meals that they brought home and they were very much appreciative. So we're really grateful for Strangers Helping Strangers and Chris. And also today was their first pop-up food market and that was really great. There was 80 bags of groceries given out to our residents and there was a lot of volunteers there. I had the opportunity to volunteer last Friday and also today. And what this guy does is really amazing. He um, interacts with other nonprofits and they know how to help each other and, and get food distribution. And he's been a really true blessing to us. I know he's in Garfield and helps the Garfield residents. And um, I invited him with the mayor's permission to um, come to our next work meeting so he could introduce himself to the mayor and all the council members. So if you have any questions, and he just wants to tell us how he'll go forward with what he's doing. But let me tell you, I've been so amazed by this young man. I mean, that he goes from town to town and this is what he does. He, he finds ways to feed people. And I'm really just so amazed and so grateful for him. So I, I can't wait till you all get to meet him and see the passion that he has for helping others because it's, it's really something else. Progress, Mayor. It's, uh, I can't wait to meet this uh, young man. Sounds very passionate. And uh, for all the, all the good things he's doing, I'm sure mm -hmm. the council is going to enjoy that, that moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Lorraine. Sure. Um, we're looking at August possibly opening this building, and I say possibly because what we'd like this building open four months ago, but uh, after thinking about what's going on throughout the whole country, in the state of New Jersey, in the county, and in, in the city, uh, we chose to play it on the safe side, nothing wrong with that. 
the, the government was, has been functioning to the T expertly uh, in that uh, duration. Uh, however, uh, we are looking for August. Uh, that We're setting our sights on that, and uh, we're hoping that nothing sets us back for that opening. Uh, a couple of days ago, not a couple of weeks ago, our administrator, our DPW director, and also our engineer, Ali, uh, we met at the high school to uh, see what kind of progress we had as far as the, the surface of uh, the tennis court. So what we did was uh, we brought along a, a rig that held uh, 1,500 gallons of water, and we flooded it. And it was a hot day, too, and that adds to evaporation. And to our dismay, it's not satisfactory. Mm -hmm. So that's going to go back to the contractor. Uh, I personally, with some experience in, in the business, don't think he can achieve the proper drainage by patching. Uh, what needs to be done there is a, an engineer goes in, shoots the elevations, gives you the points, and then you filter the points, and the game is over. That didn't happen originally here. So that's where we are with the uh, the tennis courts. And we did have a representative from the, the school board, too. It wasn't the superintendent who couldn't make it. The gentleman was Steve, uh, Mike? Steve, I don't know last name. Oh, uh, yeah. and, you know, you know, Steve? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, we conferred, and we we're all in, in agreement on that, uh, too. And one other last thing. Uh, what separates a community from looking third rate to second rate uh, is, is I feel, curb appeal. And what we have going on during the summer, uh, we have a lot of homes that when they're grooming their homes, they don't go into the curb, and that grass that grows in between the street and the curb, well, you can have a terrific-looking home, spotless, well-maintained, and you see that grass growing up from the curb, it just takes away. It, it depreciates the whole look. I say to the residents, I do this myself. I encourage my neighbors to do it. I'm cutting my grass. I'm cutting that area between the curb and the sidewalk. It only takes me five more minutes with the whacker to go and keep the street clean. By the way, we looked into it. That is your responsibility, too. So please cooperate. Let's make our town not third rate, second, if not the best. Ms. Delaney. Yes. I need a motion to open to the public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Ms. Delaney again. Okay, at this time I'm going to unmute the public's lines for anyone to that's willing to speak. But actually before I do so, I do have one statement to read into the record. I apologize. It is submitted from a Ms. Anita Young of East 54th Street. To be considered for the next meeting, it would be really helpful and comforting if residents receive weekly updates on what supports the borough is offering residents during this pandemic. Other towns had received daily, now weekly phone updates to support the residents and inform them of anything new that would affect them. How about phone messages about wearing masks and the governor's new mandate? What about information about our library? Is it open? The website provides outdated information. Has the main library opened? Are we able to go into the library or order books and pick them up? How about information about car registrations and inspections? Telling people what they can and can't do would be so helpful rather than having the residents make calls to find out what is open in the state, county, and town. I'm so disappointed that during these last four months, not once have we heard from our mayor or any other official. You have emergency calls available to community, but no one has made any effort to use this service to be informative or supportive. I know people I talk to feel they are on their own and the people in charge simply don't care and have an attitude of, you're on your own, figure it out for yourself. There are many seniors in town who is checking on them. What services or programs do you have that residents can support or receive during the pandemic? Do we have a town food bank? Help people, make it easier for them. Everyone is stressed out. Don't you think hearing from someone in our town government would help people feel safer? 
Would it be so hard to have weekly communication from our town officials? The website doesn't even provide current information about how the virus has affected our town. People need to know that information so they can alter their behaviors and create a safe atmosphere for everyone. This virus could be with us for at least two to three years. How can we work together to survive this? Could we have the town broken down into regions and people volunteer to check in on others? Would people be willing to call seniors living alone? How can we use this time to build community? This is a perfect time for it because it only takes phone calls or Zoom meetings. Really get creative and build our community relationships and communicate with us. Mr. Feligno, would you like to uh, comment on that? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I appreciate Ms. Young's uh, email. Um, I feel that my personal opinion is that the borough, the mayor and council, the administrator, the clerk, we've all gone above and beyond from day one with this pandemic to educate our residents to the best we can. Now, the avenues we have for distributing information are not vast. Uh, social media is our biggest platform. Unfortunately, not all residents uh, subscribe to social media. Um, I'm not a fan of, of constant robocalls. It desensitizes the public. That's for true emergencies. Much of <coughs> excuse me, what Ms. Young is asking is already in the media, on, in publication, everywhere. Why would we be putting out redundant information? Everything and anything that anyone needs to know about what's going on is everywhere. Um, we've done everything we can to, to educate our, our residents. We've run a safe borough. We've run a safe work environment for everybody. We've done outreaches through RAP. We've done, now we have the Strangers Helping Strangers. We did the pop-up uh, produce market today. I, I, I can't find something that we could have done that we didn't do. Um, so, you know, I, I respectfully disagree with her positions. I would welcome her to, to contact my office and, and welcome more uh, dialogue and, and, and information exchange from her. But I, I don't know what else we could have done. Um, if any council people or anybody she, wants to speak. Can I say something? Can I sure. add to that? Um, now with Angela Fava, your administrative assistant, she's really aware because um, Chris contacts her with strangers helping strangers and different she knows what food banks she's posted that so if anybody really has any questions Angela Mrs. Fava always welcomes them to call so if if residents want to call her on a Monday say hey what's happening this week for the residents any programs going on I know she would assist them and it's just 201-796-1457 extension 106 she's very helpful she gave a whole list of food bank um, locations and phone numbers. She works directly with Chris from Strangers, helping strangers, so she knows when he's going to be in town in the times. So if anybody listening to this tape or watching it calls her like on a Monday to, hey, Mrs. Fava, what's going on this week? She'd be able to answer that. And if they need a call back, you know, with confirmation of something, I know she'd be happy to do it. So that's another avenue besides social media that they can get direct attention from. Right. And also, she's helped residents, multiple residents, file their unemployment claims that they, they needed assistance with. She's gone food shopping multiple times for numerous residents. Um, we, 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 don't, we don't know you need help unless you tell us you need help. Our number hasn't changed. Call us and we'll help you with anything you need help with. But you got to reach out to us. It's difficult for us to connect with you. It's, it's simple for you to connect with us. Um, to uh, to answer that lady on this subject, I think we we've done a good job of uh, stating that 90% of what uh, you were requesting is being taken care of. Now keep in mind we also have uh, three meetings a month where the public's invited, not only invited physically, but you can come and speak before and after the meeting. So all these avenues are are being covered. Uh, so I just hope that we've answered, answered your question, but the parts are in place to facilitate your, your, uh, your questions. Ms. Delaney? Okay, at this time I'm going to unmute the public's lines for anyone else wish, wishing to speak. All participants are unmuted. Would anyone like to speak at this time? Please state your name and address for the public record. Uh, 
Jeannie Freitag, 35 Hillman Drive. Yes, Mrs. Freitag. How are you, Jeannie? Uh, good. Yourself? Not Very a complaint, just an information. Uh, the young lady who had written, uh, had her statement just read, she asked about the public library. The hut is now open for visitors. It is on their uh, web page, the library. It's limited, of course, the number of people, but as of Tuesday, the 14th, people are able to go into the public library. Uh, Jeannie, Jeannie, was that her question, or was she concerned about the uh, the new building I think being she did opened? Say something about uh, using the library, if I heard it correctly. Okay. But it's some information for anybody who's listening, just in case they were wondering. Yeah, no, if that's that wasn't what she had. It. Yeah, very good. We appreciate that. Anything else, okay, Jeannie? Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak out there? Now's the time. Jeffrey Fried Tag, 35 Hillman Drive. Just, just a quick thing. Yeah. Not a quick. The uh, stuff that goes around the uh, generator in front of the rec center coming off again. It's been off for uh, about two weeks. So it needs to be reattached. You're talking about that covering by the the covering by the generator yeah. that has the emblem of. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah, but that's. Yeah, there's one area. Yes. Yeah, that's chronically. It's just a little problem. Um, suggestion. Yeah. When they put it up, I think they use zip ties. Why don't they just use fence wires? The thing when you wire a, a uh, wire fence. We. They don't. They don't break. Okay, we got a specialist on the subject here that's going to speak a little about it. Mr. Fligno? <laughs> Definitely not a specialist, but Mr. Freitag, it's a balance. If we go too rigid with the um, anchors, the, the thing could tear, and we want to avoid that. I've um, been talking to Scott, our superintendent of DPW, about getting a little stronger um, zip tie, but not going too strong, because if they're too strong, it, the, the covering will tear, and it, it's quite expensive. But we're aware of it, and we're as equally as frustrated with it as you are. Okay. No, I know they, they're, they're sun sensitive. A lot of them, ultraviolet light kills them. It zip ties. So, okay, thank you. Anyone else care to speak? Now's the time. If not, I will close the public portion. Ms. Delaney? All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. Okay, at this time, Mayor, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, I heard all the wolves there. Um, motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Have a good Thursday evening.